Ken Munshine here, and time for a quick HEMA video. Um, I often say that I teach HEMA in a living tradition. What does this mean? Uh, you know, ever since John Clements published uh, Renaissance Swordsmanship in 1997, the, the big thing is that there's no living traditions of HEMA. Well, of course there are. I mean, there's fencing, right? And then people say, oh, sports fencing. HEMA is not sports fencing. It's completely different. Well, you know, I could see you know, a lot of people say it to people who have actually, you know, never actually studied either modern or classical fencing. I could say that Hima is not at all like Yago Shinkage Ryu. I've never studied Yago Shinkage Ryu, so I don't know that. I can't really say that. What I want to show you really briefly in this video are some of the mechanics of some of the traditional weapons, and then I'll talk a little bit about how these relate to longsword and to things like that. So, for starters, here is a stick, right? Here is the, our basic European baton form, still taught in the living tradition, swung in Molonese. You can do, there's passing steps in it. You've got these chambered positions, look a lot like ox or whatever you want to call it. You've got to transition through parry reposts in order to uh, in, in order to defend yourself, right? Obviously, there's a lot having to do with longsword mechanics, but of course, it's different. This is not a blade, right? This is a stick. You move it in circles, but still a lot of the mechanics, the opening and closing of the hands are similar, a lot of the postures are similar. Let's look for a second, let's take another weapon that I have in, we have in living tradition, which is the older style of saber. This is still taught, I myself uh, learned this from a teacher who learned it from a teacher. Um, and it's also like the stick, it's moved in Molinaise. So, my, th these movements, they're both offensive and defensive. They're parries and they're reposts, much as you do with the stick, you want to move it in a circle, right? It's a circular sort of movement, it has attacks, it has parries, it has reposts, it has everything to it, but you also have that blade on blade contact that you can that you can move the other blade right that you've got to deal with having an edge. And of course, if we take away that edge, if we take that away, well here's the stick. And the stick, very clearly, it's got this high guard. You can see photos of old Italian saber players, Mussolini even, um, using this sort of high chamber. But in the older French baton forms, you can still see these same, uh, these same sorts of Milanais, an older con, older baton, modern, modern con chambers back here, but there's still the older forms around. Well then, what about thrusting weapons? Well, obviously, right, here's a rapier. Where are your basic principles of rapier? Line, distance, timing, blade opposition, having the line, commanding the line. Um, it's got, essentially, a counterattack theory. If we look at Modern epi, or even classical epi, it's a counterattack weapon. The basic theory is that, <clears throat> yes, you can parry a repost, but optimally you want to reply in a single time. The difference is with the French school of epi, that you don't really, you, you don't really have the blade opposition, it's a lot more absence of blade, but it's the same or similar tactical theory. Um, with, however, the Italian school of fencing, which of course you can still learn it from the San Jose Masters program in the living tradition. It is very rapier-like in its movement and its combative theory that you want to command the line, close the line, things like that, which are not done in modern fencing traditions, modern sport fencing traditions. Now, if you are, uh, if you, you know, if you want to learn learn HEMA, and you want to learn HEMA and just do HEMA, that's that's great. Uh, but let's suppose you're someplace, you're living, you know, you're someplace in the Midwest, you have nobody else, but you, all you have nearby you is uh, a modern fencing school. Are you going to just learn things from a book, or do you want to get uh, a head start on it? Well, the worst things you can do than get the athleticism and the sense of distance and sense of timing, and also the sense of actions you can do with a three-foot lever on made of steel from sports epic, because even that is going to help you out. I'm not saying, of course, that longsword, here's the longsword, is at all like sports FA. It's not. But if you can understand that, and also, you know, suppose you've got the movements from, our, from your baton, 
and from maybe from the other living traditions, then you can understand what's going on in this treatise is much better because you're going to understand the movements, but also you're going to understand the tactics behind them, and you're going to understand the intentionality behind that because you're going to understand how fencing works as a system. And it really, if you do look, even at all three modern weapons, foil, epee, and saber, um, to our pyrepos based system, those saber, whoops, all the weapons, of course, are affected by gravity. That's something all weapons have in common, but the, uh, <clears throat> but if you look at uh, foil and saber, foil and saber are both right of way weapons, but saber is also a very counter attacky weapon. Uh, foil also has counter attacks, of course. Epe, of course, is not a right of way weapon. But all three teach you different things about the bigger picture, which is fencing. And then if you add in the mechanics from the older weapons, then it's my belief that you can get a much bigger and fuller and better picture, and then you can take that to the treatises and understand what's going on in the treatises much better. Because really, when it comes to using lever arms made of steel in hand-to-hand -hand combat, there's really nothing new under the sun. Okay, kill the video.